Hi guys, uh, welcome back here at DEC Engineering Tutorial. So, let's continue our discussion on water flow measurement. But this time, uh, let's talk about weirs as a measuring structure for water flow. Okay, so effective use of water for irrigation requires that flow rate and volume be measured and expressed quantitatively. No? So, measurement of flow rate in open channel is difficult because of non-uniform channel dimension and variation in the velocity across the channel. So, AWARE is a calibrated instrument used to measure the flow in an open channel or the discharge of a well or a canal outlet at the source. So, ito yung makita natin na WHERE, no? Yan yung WHERE na. So, these are the terminologies involved in WHERE's. So, we have uh, WHERE CREST. Yung ito. So, elevation of WHERE CREST. So, a wear crest is the edge over which the water flow is the wear crest. And we have the head. So, the head is the depth of water flowing over the wear crest measured at some point in the wear pan. And if we say wear pan, uh, it is the portion of the channel immediately upstream from the wear. And we have also this sharp crested wear. This is a wear having a 10 inch crease such that uh, the overflowing sh uh, sheet of water has the minimum surface contact with the crease. So, a sharp crested wear allows the water to f fall cleanly away from the wares, uh, such as V-notch, Cipolite wear, and etc. Uh, we have also a nap. A nap is the sheet of water which overflows a wear is called a nap. Ito, no? Natawag natin na nap. And other terms involved in wear is we have the brush crested wear. It is aware having a horizontal or nearly horizontal crease sufficiently long in the direction of uh, flow. When the crease is broad, the streamlines become parallel to the crease invert and the pressure distribu distribution above the crease is hydrostatic. We have also end contraction. So the horizontal distance from the edge of the wear crease to the size of the wear pan. And we have also the wear scale or the gauge. No? So the scale fastened on the sides of the wear or on the stake in the wear pan to measure the head of the wear. So uh, yan yung naka-attach dito sa wear, sa gilid ng wear natin, no? para ma makita natin siya. Para mong visual ng ano lang, na mitrosan, parang ganun. Okay, so, so next is classification of wear. So, wears are classified based on the shape of their opening or notch, and the edge of the opening can be either sharp or broad crested. So, we have sharp crested wear and broad crested wear. In sharp crested wear, we have a rectangular wear, and in rectangular wear, we have dalawa, no? We have suppressed wear and contracted wear. And sa contracted wear, meron din tayong dalawa, we have a singly contracted wear and doubly contracted wear. So, aside sa rectangular wear, we have also cipolite wear or trapezoidal wear, and we have also the v-notch wear or the triangular wear. So, ito yung sharp crested wear, ito yung broad crested wear, ito yung suppressed and contracted wear. Uh, ito yung doubly contracted, no? Kasi meron tayong ganito, dalawa, no? Pag isa lang, uh, we call it singly contracted way. So, ganun. So, next is uh, sharp crested wear. Okay? So, rectangular wear takes its name from the shape of its notch. So, the discharge through a wear or notch is directly related to the water depth and an edge is known as the head. No? This head is affected by the condition of the crease, the contraction, the velocity of the approach stream, and the elevation of the water surface downstream from the wear. So rectangular wears can be suppressed, partially contracted, or fully contracted. So for a rectangular wear, when the size of the channel acts as the ends of the wears, so the nap does not contract from the width of the channel resulting in the suppressed wear. But if the size of the channel does not act as the end of the wear and the notch opening is somewhat less than the width of the channel, then the wear is contracted. So, ito yung example natin ng um, uh, rectangular wear. No? Okay, so next slide is suppressed wear. Okay, so suppressed wear, a rectangular wear whose notch or opening sides are Coincident with the size of the approach channel, also rectangular, which extends and unchanged downstream from the wear, it is the lateral flow contraction that is suppressed. 
And if you say contracted wear, such as ruin here, the size and the crease of the wear are far away from the size and the bottom of the approach channel. So the nap will fully contract laterally at the ends and vertically at the crease of the wear, also called as unsuppressed wear. So broad crested wear, these are the wear that has horizontal or nearly horizontal crease sufficiently long in the direction of the flow so that the nap will be supported and hydrostatic pressure will be fully developed for at least a short distance. So, maganda yung suppressed wear kung hindi masyadong malayo yung B natin. Like, hindi siya masyadong narrow. Pero kung narrow siya, uh, it would be best na gamit tayo ng contracted wear. No? Just to lessen yung uh, L dito sa wear natin. Anyway, next slide is... Sipulity wear. Okay, so sipulity wear is trapezoidal in shape. So the slope of the sides inclined outwardly from the crease should be 1 horizontal to 4 vertical. Or meron siyang angle theta, which is 14.04 degrees. So the selected length of the notch L should be at least 3H and preferably 4H or longer. Sipulity wear are considered fully to contracted. So you may kita mo dito, uh, this is a sipulity wear and it is a contracted wear. Uh, V-notch where, in this case, the notch is V in shape. That's why it's called V-notch or triangular wear. No? So the depth of the water above the bottom of the V is called head H. And the V-notch design causes small changes in the discharge, hence causing a large change in the depth and thus allowing more accurate measurement than with the rectangular wear. So head should be measured at a distance of at least 4H upstream of the wear. So, where the water surface is lowered until it drops below the upper edge sa orifice natin. For example, ito yung orifice natin. So, ngayon, kung magda-drop yung water surface, so in this case, magiging wear to, na? So, dito galing yung derivation ng formula natin na ginagamit for wear, na? So, then the pressure head edge which causes the average velocity is one half the total depth of the water over the bottom edge sa orifice natin. So, in mathemat mathematical expression, area is just 2HL. So, substitute natin yan sa continuity equation natin, then it becomes 2CLH square root of 2GH, or this is equal to 2CLH 3 halves square root of 2G. So, since the acceleration by gravity is nearly constant, it is convenient to represent the product of 2C square root of 2G by a single symbol, say, C prime. Then it follows the theoretical discharge uh, formula for wear which is C prime LH 3 halves. So, meron tayong Prance's formula. So, the general formula for the wear is C prime LH raised to the power of 3 halves. So, for rectangular wear, yung C prime natin is 1.84. Thus, yung discharge natin is 1.84 L prime H to the 3 halves. So, yung L prime is equal to L kung suppress wear and that could be deducted by 0 0.1 nung head kung singly contracted wear and pag doubly contracted wear deduct natin 0 0.2 H Sipulity wear, yung C prime natin is 1.859 thus yung flow rate natin is 1.859 L prime H to the power of 3 halves So, a wear can be classified as sipulity when the tangent theta divided by 2 is equal to 1 fourth. Bali, itong, ito yung tangent theta divided by 2 or it has, yung theta angle is 14.2 Zero four degrees. So a V notch wear uh, for ninety degrees triangular wear as shown. So bali yung flow rate niya is C prime multiplied by H raised to the power of five halves. So the actual discharge has been found by experiment to be approximately uh, one point four. Thus yung Q natin is one point four H to the power of five halves. So, these are the summary of orifice and wear formulas. So, depending kung ano yung measuring device mo. So, like, ito lahat is all sharp crested. So, kung orifice, kung rectangular wear without contraction, with contraction, trapezoidal wear, and a 90 triangular wear v notch. So, ito yung mga formulas natin. So, let's have an example here. Uh, determine the discharge of the wear having a head of 0 0.3 meter and liter per second. If a 90 degrees triangular wear or a V notch is used, if a sipulity wear is used, having a length of crease na 2 meter, so meaning sipulity is a trapezoidal wear with sides inclined at 14.04 degrees with a vertical. And 
if yung contracted rectangular sharp crested ware na may length na 2 meter yung ginamit. So, for V-notch, yung formula natin for Q is 1.4 H raised to the power of 5 hubs, no? Like, we have the value of H, we just need to substitute that one, then we can get the value of Q, which is 69 liters per second. And for stability wear, we have a formula of 1.859 L H raised to the power of 3 hubs. We have the value of length, which is 2 meter. We have the value of head, which is 0.3 meters. Then, substitute that one in our... Uh, in our formula, then we have Q, which is 611 liters per second. And for contracted rectangular sharp crested wear, din sinabi kung single or doubly. So, the best assumption would be doubly. So, yung L prime is L minus 0.2 H. Thus, yung L prime is 2 minus 0 0.2 of 0 0.3. That is 1.94 meter. Thus, yung Q natin, just plug and play. Uh, 1.84 multiplied by 1.94 multiplied by 0 0.3 raised to 3 halves. Or we have 587 liters per second. Uh, another example is for large scale wares, calculate the discharge in cubic meter per second, provided that the depth ng upstream natin is 3 meter as shown, and the wear in the horizontal channel is 10 meter wide, and it has a height of 1.4 meter. So, bali yung remaining dito, yung head difference is 1.6. So, provided na yung wear na ginamit is sharp crested wear, and kung ito is pahaba, bali broad crested wear. So, First, we compute for sharp crested wear. We have the coefficient of wear, which is 0 0.611, 0 0.611 plus 0 0.075 H over P. We have the value of H and P, thus we can get the coefficient of wear, which is 0 0.6967. We can now compute for the C prime, no? which is 2 thirds of C W squared of 2G. So we have C, which is 2.057. So using the uh, general formula for wear, we have C L H reservoir of 3 halves, then we can now get the Discharge for sharp crested wear, which is 41.63 cubic meter per second. For broad crested wear, we have CW, which is 0 0.65, all over square root of 1 plus HP. We have the value of H and P. Then we can now get the coefficient of wear, which is 0 0.444. We can now get the value of C, which is 2 third of the coefficient of wear, square root of 2G. Thus, we have C, which is 1.311. And using the general formula for wear, uh, we have 1.311 multiplied by the length, 10 meters, multiplied by the head, which is 1.6. So, square root of 3 halves. Then, we can now get 26.53 cubic meter per second. Okay. So, meron din tayong tinatawag na wear plates. Okay, so... Fixed wear plates are common and simple methods of measuring the flow of water in an open channel. So, at its simplest, a wear is no more than an obstruction placed in a channel over which water flows. Unlike flumes, where the water flows through the structure. Often, this flow is over a speci specially shaped notch or opening set above the floor of the channel. Okay, And we have also the portable wear plate sets. These are a simple way to measure water in a natural channel. So each, each set consists of apat na interchangeable stainless steel wear plates and aluminum wear carrier. With inter interchangeable plates, you can select the wear that, bis, uh, that best fits each side's flow rates. <laughs> okay, so and we have also wear box now. Uh, a wear box is incorporates a thin plate wear, a vena recipolite. Ito yan, ah, makikita mo. Into a pre-engineered structure. So, wear boxes are generally, generally used to measure from 3.99 to 493.5 gallons per minute or 0 0.25 to 31.14 liters per second. Although larger flow rate, wear boxes are available. So, flows entering or exi exiting the wear box can be pipe or it can be free spilling. No? So, the wear box design, inherent design, flexibility means that multiple inlets or outlet flow streams can be accommodated as well as dual or triple flow streams measured independently. So, ito yung mga composition niya. No? Uh, it has a box body, usually aluminum, fiberglass, or stainless steel. It has a fixed inlet bubble, uh, fixed wear plate carrier, interge interchangeable wear plate, aluminum, stainless steel, so, the wear box body is specifically 
size to generate the proper wear fall for intended flow rate, something lacking in most uh, competing wear boxes. So to help secure the wear boxes, uh, each unit is provided with stainless steel anchor feet on the outside of the box, allowing it to be mounted on the concrete slab. So yeah, no? so ito yung mga wear box natin. So we have this dimension, wear box dimension for rectangular, cipollite, and 90 degrees triangular notch wear. So ito yung mga, so this table below gives the sizes of the wears best adapted to measuring streams of water varying from 15 to 625 liters per second. So may mga measurement yan na. Yung mga tamang sizes. Okay? So, we have A, B, ganun, na? So, medyo old na yung book na to. Okay, so we have also wear channels. So, wear channels measured flows in the creeks, small stream, canals, and channels. Installations can be accomplished with either traditional anchor clips secured to earth anchors or the wear channels can be secured off-site to Africa's concrete slab for a true and new hassle uh, installation. So, ito yung itsura ng wear channel. So, yung measurement of head on the wear crest, uh, usually as a specially constructed scale or carpenter's rule, head or depth of water on wear crest is of 10. A scale called wear gauge is set upstream at a distance of no less than 4 times the depth of the water. So, balik kung mag-measure ka ng height, hindi yan dun sa, sa wear talaga, na? Uh, mag-offset ka pa yan ng 4 times the depth ng water. Then, dun mo siya i-measure. No? Or in the corner near the banks where the velocity is essentially zero. So, the zero point on the scale must be set level with the crease of rectangular trapezoidal wear or with the vertex of the triangular wear. And the scale or the lag upon which to place a roll may be passed to the bulkhead at a lateral distance from the end of the notch of not less than twice the greatest depth of the water edge over the crease. To get the zero point of scale or log scale in the crease, a car carpenter's level may be used. So small errors in reading edge relatively large errors in discharge determination. Okay, so that's uh, how sensitive it is. No? Small reading in edge, relatively large error in discharge determination. So measurement of head or depth on crease wear. So Hook gauges are widely used and considered the most accurate for determining the water depth or stages. We have also recording gauges called water level re recorders are used to obtain the continuous graph of a gauge height. So essential parts are we have a float or a pressure indicating device, a recording mechanism, and a clock. So several different kinds of recording gauge are also available. So, we have also the effect of boundary form on coefficient of discharge. So, one major source of error in using wear and orifice as a measuring device is the change of flow due to self-deposition in front of the structure. No? Siyempre, nag-flow man ng tubig. No? So, di na mali, ma, mali kaya, no? Ano yung mga self-deposition? No? So, the presented formulas are summarized are for average condition and do not reflect the changes in the boundary forms. No? So, figure 7 uh, can be used to determine a more accurate discharge coefficient. No? Like, uh, to take account for the self-deformation, I mean, self-deposit, so, pwede magamit in chart. No? So, for orifice, the coefficient of discharge CD in the following formula is a function of the height of the opening and the depth of the water over the center of opening. So, you have this formula na CD area square root of 2GH, which is the formula for the orifice. So, from figure 7, a coefficient of 0 0.027 corresponds to the condition where B, uh, where the ratio B over H is equal to 0, which is not always the case. So, parang ganun, no? may mga modification factor pa for self-deposition. No? So, for years, the coefficient of 0 0.0184 in equation 9 corresponds to the value of H over H plus W of 0 0.22. Essentially, the condition shown in figure 4, where the depth over the crease is one-third the distance from the bottom to the crease. Hence, when the bottom is uh, other than 3H below the crease, the coefficient of discharge given in figure 7 should be 
use in the following formula for more accurate. So like, may kita mo man yan dito, no? So bali, yung x-axis, may kita mo, you have h over h plus w, and you have also b over 2h. So bali, dito is a where to na part, na cd, while dito naman is a orifice na cd, no? So bali, yung h over h plus w, yan yung sa where, then, kukunin mo yan dito, no? Dito sa chart, no? Ito yung chart for where, and dito sa baba, ito naman yung chart for orifice. Like, kukunin mo lang yung V over H. Then, then gawa, uh, once makuha mo na yung value ng V over 2H mo, like, ma-plug in mo yan, inline mo lang yan, gawa ka lang ng vertical line, patungo dun sa orifice na curve, and then, the corresponding CD, yun yung gagamitin mo sa design mo. Okay? Okay, so... So, ito yun, no? Ito yung parang deposition ng self. So, may changes talaga, no? Sa boundary. So, yung percent increase in discharge cost by selting behind a wear. So, we have this uh, percentage of increase also, no? So, yung figure 8 uh, definition sketch for selting behind a wear to be used with table 6.6, .6, which is the increase in discharge occurring as a result of the upstream geometry. So, comparison may be readily made for any change in depth by remembering that the discharge Q varies with the 3 halves power of depth H for the rectangular wears, with the 5 halves power for the triangular wear, and with the 1 half power of H for the submerged wear. So, yeah, no? So, may mga modification pang nangyayari sa mga formula natin kasi uh, need pa natin i-consider yung Silt deposition, no? Uh, kasi yan man talaga yung mangyayari no? sa actual. So, we have also disadvantages and disadvantages for wares. So, for wares, the advantages for water measurement is accuracy, simplicity, and ease of construction, non-obstruction by most or floating materials, and durability. Uh, the disadvantage is requirement of considerable fall of water, which makes their use in areas having level land impracticable. And we have also the position of gravel, sand, and silt above the where prevents accurate measurement. So, for the orifice, the advantages is a small loss of head, making it suitable for use in canal and ditches having very small slope. And the disadvantages is collecting of floating debris, uh, collecting of sand and silt above the orifice. Okay, so in the next video, uh, we will talk on flumes, another measuring structure used for water measurement. So just keep on watching and keep on learning. See you in the next video. Thank you.